Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. Today we're taking a look at two market beating stocks to consider buying as the market continues to recalibrate the overall stock market for their inflation outlook. So the two stocks we're looking at today are United Rentals and TJX companies. So URI is up about 41% in the last year versus the S&P 500's 10% dip. And TJX is up about 16% over the last year with both of these stocks uh, having some nice six months runs recently as well. But before we get into everything, I want to say remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast and make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look at some of our services, portfolios, and more. Before we jump into those uh, two stocks, it's quickly worth going over what's going on in the market and why we're looking at these two stocks, in particular considering uh, all the things that are happening on the inflation front and everyone now recalibrating their growth bets. So the NASDAQ managed to eke out a tiny gain on Wednesday, uh, with the S&P 500 only dipping about 0.16% which hardly sounds like really much of anything, but it was nice to see that the bears weren't totally back in the driver's seat, at least not yet. And then all three major U.S. indexes then posted nice gains on Thursday. And yesterday's session actually showed this wild journey we're on where NVIDIA surged 14% and we just have this just up and down topsy-turvy market so far. Uh, and it really just yeah shows that kind of Jekyll and Hyde nature of the market recently. And then sure enough, we saw stocks then tumble again on Friday morning as one of the Fed's preferred inflation gauges, which is that personal consumption expenditures price index. So that PCE you hear about, it came in hot, which was to be expected with that January CPI coming in hot as well. So it wasn't too much of a shock, but once again, Wall Street's really reacting to anything inflation-related, I guess you could say overreacting. They've been doing that since the summer, so anything that's showing signs of inflation cooling, big buying, anything that shows inflation possibly not cooling, heavy selling. So we're on this topsy-turvy run, and hopefully we now kind of move sideways until we have the next uh, CPI release in March in the Fed's next FOMC meeting. So hopefully today's selling kind of cools off, which we have seen some of it cool off through mid-morning trading because we were down pretty big pre-market and then in the early market. So we can see where we're going, but essentially Wall Street's had to completely recalibrate that inflation bet that had drove stocks much higher to start uh, 2023. Though, so that first like five week rally was all based on the idea that the Fed would be able to really uh, take its foot off the gas and inflation was cooling, but then everything's coming in hot and unemployment still at 50 year lows. And so now the two year U.S. Treasury is back up near its November peaks. And everyone basically has had to recalibrate those peak inflation bets and slow their roll and all of that. So amid all of this, we're going to take a look at two stocks that have performed really well not only in uh, 2023 so far and in the last six months, but have shown that their resilience in the last couple of years and have provided nice outlooks recently as well, even though the market in general is uh, trending in the wrong direction in terms of their earnings outlook. So that S&P 500 earnings outlook is trending, as I said, in the wrong direction for 2023. So the first stock we're going to look at today is United Rentals which trades on the ticker URI. United Rentals is one of the world's largest equipment rental firms. Pretty straightforward from its name. The portfolio allows uh, customers, which include construction firms, utility companies, local governments, really anybody who wants to rent anything. Uh, maybe you could even rent one yourself if you're trying to do a backyard project or something like that. You could rent uh, light towers, generators, scissor lifts, really anything under the sun in that large equipment uh, rental construction kind of world. So the firm's revenue was booming prior to the pandemic uh, with sales up about 15 to 21% for three straight years. They did then slip in 2020, but then bounced back in a big way. Uh, they posted 14% growth in 2021 to top its pre-pandemic totals. And then uh, despite that slowdown of the economy last year, URI's revenue climbed 20% to about 11.6 billion, which was a nice, strong showing. The company is able to raise its prices kind of along with inflation, and more companies are likely more likely to rent instead of going on big spending sprees because equipment's really expensive to buy them outright. So if they're if you're worried about a possible recession or an economic slowdown, you're more likely to rent instead of buy. 
Uh, United Rentals also completed its acquisition of another rental firm back in early December to boost its reach, customer base, and beyond. So it's now boosting its uh, overall outlook uh, as well with that. So URI provided upbeat guidance when it released its results in late January. So looking ahead, we're calling for another 20% revenue growth this year to get all the way up to $14 billion, and then another 4% on top of that in 2024. And then on the bottom line, we're calling for 30%, roughly 30% adjusted earnings growth this year, and then another 10% in 2024. And as I said, uh, it's boosted its bottom line outlook, and analysts then boosted their estimates. So the 2023 estimates up about 12% since its release, and 2024 estimates up about 10%. So that positive upward revisions helping land a Zach's rate number two buy at the moment alongside A grades for value and growth. Plus, URI last when it reported its earnings that it plans to restart its share repurchase program, which is great to hear and shows that it's really confident in its business at the moment. And uh, it, so it plans to buy back $1 billion in common stock in 2023. And then even better, and this is another huge sign of strength and resiliency amid an economic slowdown, uh, the company is introducing a dividend. So the introduction, this is a quote, the introduction of our dividend program reflects the strength and resiliency of our operating model and our ability to generate cash across the cycle while continuing to invest in growth. So combined uh, with the restart of its share repurchase program and its new dividend payment, the company expects to return approximately $1.4 billion in cash to shareholders in just 2023 alone. So that's a great sign. The The quarterly dividend is going to be $1.48 $1 per share, excuse me, $1.48 per share, uh, with it yielding about 1.3% at the moment. In terms of the stock price performance, URI has soared 750% in the last 10 years. This crushes the construction sector. So the Zach's construction sector is 100% climb. In the S&P 500, it's 162% run. This includes a 230% jump in the last three years, with the stock up about 40% in the past 12 months and 25% year to date. It hit fresh highs not too long ago, yet a recent pullback has it uh, sitting at RSI levels of just 55%, so really near neutral. So that's a good sign if you want to get back into the stock. It had gotten a little overheated with that big run, but the nice cool down has it at much more uh, stable price at the moment. And long-term investors don't really need to be that worried about that anyways, but just worth noting. And then on the valuation front, even though it's sitting near fresh highs in terms of its price, it's trading at a 40% discount to its own decade-long highs at just 10.5 times forward 12-month earnings. And that's actually right near its own 10-year median, and it's trading at a 33% discount to its Zach's econ sector and a 40% discount to the S&P 500. So overall, United Rentals seems to be a stock worth considering both for the near-term uncertainty and as a longer-term buy-and-hold investment as part of a sort of the construction sector of your portfolio if you want to add a stock there. And now we're going to transition to a completely different company, uh, in a totally different area of the economy, and that is TJX Companies, which is in the ticker TJX. TJX is an off-price apparel and home decor retailer that operates roughly 4,800 stores uh, across the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Germany, and other places in Europe. The company operates under TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, and then some smaller brands uh, that are a little less prominent. But TJ, TJ Maxx and Marshalls and Home Goods are those big ones, especially you see in the United States a lot. Uh, the company has found success both through in store retail and the expansion of its digital and e commerce offerings. And the company has really managed to carve out a really nice niche within a rapidly evolving retail landscape, even though the likes of Kohl's and Macy's and Nordstrom's and those kind of places struggle to compete with the likes of. Target and Amazon, uh, TJX is just has a nice business model and has a really loyal customer base. Uh, the pandemic, though, obviously did hurt the company's stores in a big way when it was forced to close a lot of its stores because it was quote non-essential. So that revenue was down 23% in 2020, but it bounced back already in a massive way. Sales climbed 51%, uh, in t which in its 2022, so which was actually 2021, but it was its fiscal 2022 year to blow away its pre 
COVID total, and then it popped 3% in its FY 2023, which was last year. Uh, that that was a report recently, and its earnings were up around 10%. So, and it also finished the year nicely. So the, the Q4 was strong. Uh, its Q4 2023 U.S. comps were up 4%, which was way better than the full year as shoppers are looking for bargains once again. The 5% sales growth overall in the fourth quarter was also stronger than the whole year, which was nice to see as people are just looking for those deals everywhere they can. So total sales, uh, yeah, were, as I said, really strong in the fourth quarter. And overall, it, it posted 3% growth in 2023 on top of that 51% expansion the year before that. So it was nice to see that growth on top of a really tough to compete against year. And then looking ahead, we're calling for another 5% revenue growth in FY 2024 and then another 6% in FY 25. And then we're calling for 13% adjusted earnings growth this year and then another 11% adjusted earnings growth next year. So really stable and steady top and bottom line growth for this retailer that has a really nice uh, niche within the market. So it's not really competing against some of these uh, big giants for uh getting kind of flushed out of the market like some of these other retailers have. That said, its earnings revisions have been a little stagnant since its report, so it's at a number three hold at the moment, or a little mixed, I should say, not necessarily stagnant, but just mixed. Still, overall, uh, fiscal 2024, the company said, is off to a strong start, and it remains confident in its improving profitability and reaching its pre-tax profit margin target of about 10.6 by fiscal 2025. Um uh, the company also said it was uh, really confident that they're on track to becoming an increasingly profitable 60 plus billion dollar business. So with that in mind, they're going to do they're expected to do about 52 billion dollars in sales in FY 2024. So they're expected to get to 60 in somewhat short order, which is a good sign. Plus, they noted when they reported on February 22nd that the company plans to increase its dividend by 13 percent into buyback. Two to two point five billion dollars worth of stock this year, which is a great sign. Another, uh, so along with United Rentals, a, a business that introduced introduced the dividend, and then this one's raising its dividend by thirteen percent, even amid all of the economic uncertainty. So it just shows how strong the business is and buying back stock. On top of that, twelve of the fifteen brokerage recommendations Sachs has are strong buys, and it's uh, one point. 5% dividend yield easily tops its industry's average of about 1%, which doesn't even include that new payout expected. So in terms of stock price movement, the stock is up about 100 or 245% in the last decade versus the S&P 500's 160%. It's also up about 14% in the last two years and 20% in the last six months versus the S&P 500's 5% drop in the retail sector's 9% climb. Uh, it is down about 7% from its January peaks, and the selling has it actually near oversold RSI levels of 30 or below. It's at 33, and it's trading 10% below its average Zach's price target at $77 per share at the moment. So nice entry point possibly for both near-term and long-term investors. And then in terms of valuation, TGX is hovering near not too far away from its uh, 10-year median, so it's trading at 21.8 times forward 12-month earnings which also matches its econ sector despite that large outperformance. And this is 50% below its own highs over the stretch, despite it trading not too far away from its highs, uh, as we mentioned recently. So its valuation is looking really strong. So both of these stocks appear to be nice buys for the current economic uncertainty and as longer term holds that offer different exposure uh, in different areas of the economy. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified 
identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's Investment Research as a whole.